Hey guys, on well, my July 10th DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last two weeks or so. Now, also, if you're at Comic-Con, you know, right now, be on the lookout for me there. You know, this is the Comic-Con all this week. But anyway, though, on to the first movies. The first one I got from Warner Brothers is Frequency. And this is one that I have always really liked for a long time when I saw it in the theaters. I will say, though, before going into it, it's one of those kind of movies. It's a little bit like um, Bicentennial Man, where there's kind of like a lot of sad scenes. And a lot of things are like, you know, tearjerker kind of scenes. Where you're like, and, I, and I'm like that with this movie. And I, I haven't, because I haven't watched this in probably like six or seven years. And I remember, you know, I do get quite emotional. But the movie is about um, Dennis Quaid. It starts with Dennis Quaid's character back in, I think it's the... I think it was the 60s and you know he was he's a firefighter and you know you see him doing his job and things like that then it you know and he has this um, kind of like a radio not like a CB radio but kind of like a radio where you could you had to have a license for it back then you could talk to certain people through it I think it was almost like just like a regular radio but just for like you know certain people to broadcast things and he had one of these things then it cuts to years later with his son in the house and his son ends up you know discovering the radio and you know you find out early on that his father had died when he was a child and he finds this radio and finds that he can talk to his father back in the past because there's something going on with the sky and with that he's able to talk to his father so it's him basically trying to you know get his father to believe him and warn him about what's going to happen and you know these kind of things where when you change one thing in the past things start changing for the worst so one thing gets changed and maybe fixed for the time then something else goes wrong then something else goes wrong and the main thing to this is because of the change of his father living there is a serial killer during this time who originally only killed three people but because of the father he went on and killed I think like seven or eight more so it's the plot to try and stop this guy this is a really really good one you know like a really well done movie this is one I would definitely recommend I really like this one Dennis Quaid I thought they did a good job. Now, I know that one Dennis Quaid was real over the top, but this is one of, I think, Dennis Quaid's, I would say, probably one of his best. The next one I got is a crazy movie from Ken Russell from Warner Brothers, and it's um, Altered States. This one's a little hard to explain. I was, when I was watching him, like, because I remember watching this, like, probably, like, when it first came out on DVD, thinking, how am I going to ever, you know, explain this again? And the basic idea is it's all about in the 70s and early 80s when they were doing, I think it was... I can't remember if it, when it would take takes place. I totally blanked on that. I think it was maybe in the seventies or sixties. I totally blanked on the date. But there was when they were doing the, you know, putting people in the dark spaces and like hypergenic sleep or whatever you call that, and putting them under in those dark rooms with the water and all that kind of thing. And why doing that? He's at this university because he's one of the teachers, and he's sort of doing this and sort of experiencing all these weird thoughts and all these weird religious images, and. I think seven years go by, he's in a new place with his wife, and, you know, he's, he's basically is, um, let's see, he go, before he goes to his new school, he goes to Mexico, and he basically, his plan is, he wants to tap into the, he thinks that by doing these things, he can get and see all the memories of, I guess, the past Earth. It's, like I said, it's very hard to explain, but it's basically he wants to see the creations of everything, you know, and he thinks that he can see this and how things start. And I said, like, like I said, there's a big religious undertone to this and trying to see, you know, how things started. But by doing this, and he goes to Mexico and drinks this potion, it starts causing these changes to him. That's all I'm going to say to it. And there, I will say, too, that there are some amazing sequences in... Um, in the zoo, which is like like really cool sequences with the elephants and stuff. Like if you see this amazing like stuff, like you, they would never see them do this now. These kind of things um, without CGI, it would all be CG the way they did this. But this is one, like I said, a really creepy one too. The end is really. It, I mean, this is some really creepy imagery in this. I would definitely check this out. But like I said, it is very strange. And the next one I got is Outland, starring Sean Connery. This is from like the early '80s and. And it's basically he ends up getting he's a police officer when he's with his family he's always getting moved around to different places and he's always in space doing things and he ends up getting put onto this mining 
um, place to be the head of the police. And when he's there, he ends up, like the people who are working as the miners, all of a sudden they're starting to go crazy. Like some of them are, t you know, pulling out the air thing from their suit, and there's these cool sequences when their head are exploding. They like, the effects they use was crazy. It's like these balloon heads blow up and like that, that was some of the coolest stuff in it. Um, but he basically is trying to discover and figure out what's going on, and the um, the one the one who's the doctor is the one who, woman from Misery, um, who was the the police chief's wife, and she's really really good in this. She's like the best character in it, and she's basically they're basically trying to well they find out and you figure this out from the trailer in the back that it's a drug that's going around, and he's basically trying to put a stop to it. And by calling out the, you know, that this is going on, he ends up in trouble with, you know, the other cops, and there's all these kind of things, and he ends up having a bounty on his head, and he ends up having to be the person who's trying to survive out there. And it, it is very, very cool. I thought it was pretty well done. And it's different, because, you know, normally these kind of things are about, like, an alien in space. This is kind of about the people after him. And this is definitely one to check out. The next one I got is Snoop Dogg's production company made this, and I don't know about this. It was only, I think it was like $10 at Best Buy, and it's called Mac and Devin Go to High School. And I get what he was kind of going for. I think they were trying to go for a Howard and Kumar kind of marijuana movie. And, you know, I have no problem with marijuana. Like, that's not something I do or anything like that. And they even say in the beginning of the movie, you know, if you're not stoned, don't watch this. And I wasn't because I don't do that. So I guess that, you know, I, that's why I didn't like it. But the, basically the movie is about Snoop Dogg is like this, he actually plays a high school student who hasn't graduated after 15 years and he's like a big stoner and he sells, you know, the weed to all the students and Devin, I think that's who it was, I think it was Devin, is played by Wiz Khalifa, who's a really popular rap, rapper and I think his music's good and I actually thought he did a good job acting it. But that's the thing is the movie isn't like really poorly made it's just the writing in this thing is really not very good and Annie Milonakis has a real small thing that was one of the main reasons I got it because I like Annie Milonakis stuff and he's only in it for like a minute or two but you know it's basically the one character is kind of a straight-A student he's getting ready to graduate and he's gonna give the speech and he's having a hard time writing it so Snoop Dogg's character is like getting him high and that's basically it like I said it's not one I would run out to get the next one from Sony I got is a Guy Pearce film, Lockout. I talked about this one a while back when it first came out. I like this one a lot. It's Guy, you know, I've been a fan of Guy Pearce for a long time, especially Ravenous, um, you know, and The Time Machine, Memento. But The Time Machine and Ravenous were two of like my all-time favorites with him. Um, and this one is kind of a little bit of a different role for him because he's kind of more of the character you'd see like Jason Statham doing, kind of like the action guy and things like that. And he's basically just, you know, the movie opens with him getting accused of murder, and he's getting questioned about it, and he's saying, well, you saw this and all that. And at the same time, the president's daughter has gone to this police, this prison in space, where basically they put the prisoners, instead of having them in cells and, you know, causing trouble and stuff, they basically put them into sleep for basically as long as they're there. So if they're, you know, have a case of 100 years or whatever, they're basically be just basically cryogenically frozen for all that time. And she's there basically checking it out, seeing if it seems safe and humane, and seeing if there's any side effects from being asleep for all that time. When she's there, you know, she's the president's daughter, so they, she has security. The, um, one of the crazy prisoners ends up getting the gun and then, you know, letting all the prisoners out. So the president's daughter is basically hiding in there, and Guy Pierce's character is basically told, you know, he's going to be put under if he doesn't go and help. So he ends up going there and trying to rescue the president's daughter, and, you know, it's that kind of a thing. And it's got, like, a vibe to, like, the Alien 3 kind of prison films, you know, and it says on there, Die Hard meets Blade Runner. It is that kind of thing, like him crawling around, trying to hide out from him, and, you know, killing people and things like that. I am glad, too, that this is the unrated cut, too. I don't know, like, the major differences with it, but this is definitely one that I would check out. I thought this was a pretty cool, you know, prison, you know, in space movie. The next one I got is another, is a Christian Bale film called Flowers of War from Lions Gate, and it's basically about, you know, I don't know a whole lot about history. I guess I know more about history of DVDs and Blu-rays, but I know this, you know, from what I found out and stuff, this was when there was a war in, I think it was like the 20s, I think, and Japan basically raided China and took over China, and Christian Bale's character is this, 
um, he basically works as a funeral guy. He basically picks up the bodies and things like that. So he ends up going to this um, church, and when he's there, it ends up being, you know, the, the I think the something happened in the body. He was supposed to pick up the body of the priest. So his son's there. And he ends up, you know, there's a whole group of these girls there. And he doesn't, you know, he sees they're being mistreated and there's all kinds of terrible things happening to them. And he ends up posing as the priest in hopes of trying to keep these girls safe. There's also a group of these prostitutes that are living in the basement there. So it's like all this kind of like rivalry between the girls and, you know, because it's like a real religious group and they don't really like these prostitute girls. And there's a relationship too with Christian Bale and one of the prostitutes. But it's basically though him and the whole plot is trying to find a way to keep these girls girls safe and get them out and this really has really good like war sequences and like you know things like that the thing is though it is very depressing it is a very sad movie so just go into it knowing that it's not a I mean not a really happy movie but it is very well done um, I thought Christian Bale did a really good job too the next one is from Criterion and it's the last days of disco it's a Chloe Savini Vigny movie and um, Who's the other person in this? Kate Beckinsale. And this is a real different movie for Kate Beckinsale. It's from 1998. Because normally you see her in, like, the underworld movies and kind of action kind of stuff. This one was kind of a movie of, set during the early 80s, during the time when disco was, like, at its highest popularity. Right about, though, when it was about to just sort of flop. And, you know, with this kind of stuff, too, when you see all these kind of movies, they're always talking about how like there's people who hated disco during this time and loved it so it has a lot of this in this and it's basically about these two girls and set to the backdrop of them always going to this disco club which is a super popular club and everybody wants to get into it and you know it's like kind of like these I'm sure the like, clubs are still like this now when they're real selective you're know, waiting at the door you can't get in and their characters, it's basically about them and their romances and things like that, you know, trying to find boyfriends and things like that through their lives. And they end up getting an apartment together, and it's this, like, real small place where you have to cut through all the rooms to get to the bathroom. And, um, you know, it's about all the kinds of drugs that are going on in this time. It's all about all that kind of stuff. It was very well done. It's definitely a character study kind of film, just looking at the lives of them and some of their friends. One guy who's not sure if he's gay. He's like always telling these girls that he thinks he is and kind of like a pity thing. But he, you know, he don't really think he is. But he's always trying to get with all these girls. And it's also the same time when there's all kinds of sexually transmitted diseases going on. So it goes into all those kind of things. Like I said, it goes into all these different aspects. They did a really amazing job, though, with you know, the music. Like, they got, like, everything you can imagine. Like, I didn't even think of, because I wasn't born then, so I didn't even know some of these stuff would be considered disco, and I guess they were. And I like, too, the ending, like, the last, you know, speech in this movie. I don't know, this is definitely one that I really liked, a really good character study movie about that time, you know, like, right when disco was ending, and really well acted. And I thought, like I said, Craig Beckinsale was real different in this. I thought she was good. I would, I would like to see her do more of that kind of stuff. The next one I got is from Synapse Films, and it's Twins of Evil, and it's a Hammer Horror film. And it stars the two girls in this were, like, I think the first ever, I think, Playboy Twins in a spread at the time. I think by now there's probably been a lot of them. But it's a Peter Cushing film, is in it. It is, Peter Cushing is in it. This is a really good one, like one of the Hammer ones. Because I haven't seen too many Hammer films. This was really good. The cover to this is great, too. But it's basically about, Peter Cushing is like this kind of, it's set during like the 1800s, I, th I think it was the 1800s when witches and everything was, you know, everyone was all crazy about witches and burning witches, so they're always going around burning women, accusing them of being witches and things like that, and these two girls end up staying with Peter Cushing and his wife because their parents have been killed, and um, the one, there's the two twins, the one girl's like a real good, and the other one is like, doesn't like the idea of being good, and you know, is trying to cause all kinds of problems, and always against everything, and there's this count, and I was saying the count looks a lot like Jimmy Fallon. It's not Jimmy Fallon, but like someone even posted it on IMBD, it looks like Jimmy Fallon. It's like count something or other, and he's all into, you know, Satan and devil worshiping and things like that. And he ends up bringing a woman back to life who bites him, turns him into a vampire. So he ends up turning the one girl into a vampire. It's all that kind of stuff. Really well done. And I really like the music in this, because some movies during this time had that crazy, like all over the place music that was like, you know, swinging 60s. I never liked that kind of 
kind of music. Sometimes that takes you out of the movie. This one had really great music. This is a really cool one. I really like this. And I thought it was pretty creepy, too. There were some real creepy vampire sequences, and like the end was really cool. Peter Cushing was great in this. Definitely check this one out. The next one I got, and I got to order this online. I couldn't find this anywhere. And it's Barbara Hershey in The Entity. Don't, like, absolutely love the cover they put on this. But it was kind of like, if you didn't know what it was, you wouldn't even know what this is. And the other thing is, that's kind of a shame, is there's absolutely no menu on this. It just, it's like a disc, like, a, like the first DVDs or something. You just put it in, it just plays. And this is an Anchor Bay title, so it was kind of weird that they didn't give it a menu or a trailer or anything. But it's basically about this woman, and they say it's based on a true story. And, you know, it kind of makes it even creepier, the fact that there are some elements about this that they say are true. And it's this woman who was getting basically raped and attacked repeatedly in front of her family, in front of her kids and everything, by this something. And, you know, she's talking to this doctor, and he's all thinking that it's all in her head and doesn't believe it and thinks that it's like the whole family is just sort of imagining it and because she believes it so much they kind of think that it's real and it's him and at the same time it's these sort of you know ghost hunter types trying to you know believing that it's happening and it's kind of like the first paranormal activity kind of thing like I don't know I thought this was pretty good like very creepy too next one I got is American Reunion the unrated version and this you know I, I like this movie I've been a fan of all the American Pie movies and this is basically you know Jim um, I think it was all of them like basically getting back together for like a reunion and you know they don't they were all there except they didn't want Stifler there and then Stifler ends up coming to the bar they're at and at the same time there's a girl in this that is trying to because um, they're basically you know playing this big get together and there's a the neighbor to Jim's neighbor you know at his old house is basically trying to seduce him and she's played by the actress who was in Anna Riffin's show Look so definitely check that out um, and she's basically trying to seduce him, so it's all that kind of stuff going on. I thought this was funny. I, I really like this. I like the characters. Like, um, Brendan, you know, a friend of mine, Wet Movie, reviewed this and was saying, hey, he thought it was a shame that they didn't have, some of the characters really had small parts. You know, they had kind of like, um, the one from Angus and stuff, and Shannon Elizabeth really had like teeny parts, and I do agree, it was kind of a shame that they couldn't find a way to put them in the, this a little longer, because at the end it's like the reunion scene, especially Natasha Leone only has this one scene, and you know, I would like to have seen them in a little bit more, that was the only thing, since it was supposed to be a reunion, I wish they could have found a way to just give them a little bit more to do, that's the only complaint I had. The next one is from Wellgo USA, and it's Best Laid Plans. And it's about these um, this one guy who owes a whole bunch, you know, all this money, and um, to because of a debt, and it's um, his friend who has special needs, and basically his friend has this abil amazing ability to knock people out, and you know, and basically he ends up putting him into these cage fighting match to try and work off the debt that he owes to these mobsters. I don't know. I thought this was an interesting one. The next one I got is Shark Week, the 20th um, anniversary collection from Discovery. The one thing on this I really like is it has a bunch of documentaries on sharks and things like that, but it has the Mythbusters Shark Week special. So this is kind of cool because I think this is the only thing out, you know, that you can buy with the Mythbusters on Blu-ray. And, you know, it looks great. Hopefully down the line they put out some of the series on um, Blu-ray. And this is basically them trying out shark myths. The one thing I will say with the Mythbusters, though, is I felt like the early seasons, they kind of did all the cool stuff, and now they're just trying to find whatever they can. Like, the early seasons, they were, like, really cool stuff, but hopefully they, you know, can find more stuff to do. I also got from Mill Creek a number of HD titles on Blu-ray. Um, from Earth From Above... Um, Earth from Above, The Reservation of Water and Forest, and Shark Divers was basically about um, people like swimming with sharks, documentaries on that. Um, you know, it kind of freaks me out a little bit because, like, I get, like, paranoid of sharks. I won't even go in the ocean. And these are all, like, documentaries on food and wildlife conservation. Really good HD stuff, like, really good. Um, and it talks about, to like, farmers and things like that, about things they can do to help it. But these are really good ones, really good price, too, for all about just, um, you know, the documentaries and those kind of things. The next one, now this one, I'm going to get, I would, you know, I was thinking about this all day, like this is definitely going to get like one of my highest recommendations of something to get, because I absolutely love this, and it's from E1, 
and it's the in-betweeners the co complete series and this is such a funny show I think they're bringing it to MTV and like they're doing an American version I don't know about that but they're also it has an ad in here too for the movie which I definitely want to watch the in-betweeners the movie in September that comes out but it's about this one kid who was this rich kid that kind of you know went to private school and then he his mother ended up losing her money or something and had to send him to public school so it's about him and his adventures in the school and he basically ends up becoming friends with these kids and there's basically you know different groups of kids at the school there's like the the freaks and then these kids there and then the popular kids so they're kind of in the middle so they're in between the freaks and the popular kids and it's all these kinds of adventures these kids go on and this show is absolutely hilarious like workaholics was funny but this was this is just so funny um like and this is kind of show too that you can just keep watching through it because you know there's some shows you're like i can watch one or two of them and then you kind of want to take a break from it this thing i kept on watching through these things like crazy and the one episode that I really liked was when they all, the one ended up getting his driver's license, and the woman's like this real pervy woman, he ends up passing, and ends up, they're going to this theme park, and, you know, all these kind of problems that they run into, because the car door gets off, so they have to carry the car door around. There's one when they go to a RV park, and they're all going there because they think they're going to get laid at this prom of the RV park. They're absolutely ridiculous stuff. Like, I don't know, all in all, though, this is just such a funny show about these kids in high school and definitely has like kind of situations that everyone kind of went through in school and I think that's what kind of makes it funny and it's also definitely not like a PG show it's a total R-rated dirty kind of like super bad humor but it's a British show and it's one of the funniest British things I've seen in a long time it's definitely up there with Little Britain and Come Fly With Me like I, I, I really think British humor is some of the funniest stuff out the next one I got is from E1 as well and it's called Extraterrestrial, and it's not like an E.T. movie, and they even say that when they were describing it. It's basically about this, these two people, and they're having like a one-night stand, and they end up waking up, and when they wake up, they're um, uh, getting ready to leave, the one guy's getting ready to leave. They turn on the TV, there's nothing on the TV. They look outside, everything seems empty, there's no one around, and then they end up seeing this ship in the sky. And they're, the only person they end up running into at first is this neighbor. So it's basically this whole thing about, um, you know, concerning and not knowing what's going on and how is this guy here. Then the husband comes back because the woman was married. So it becomes a very awkward thing. And who is this guy that's with them? And the neighbor, who's this creepy guy, is basically going to spill the beans that these two are sleeping together. So the one guy ends up coming up with the idea of saying to the husband that he thinks that that guy was an alien and that he think he didn't see his car and all this stuff that he was probably a clone so it basically drives the husband nuts and he ends up like going out and a lot of things happen from there because he thinks that everybody is clones and things like that but this is definitely one that I thought was good you know I really found this a pretty cool another character study film the next ones I got from um, Shout Factory, it's Rocco's Modern Life Season 3. This is a great show. You know, it's basically, you know, Rocco and, and his friend Heifer, who's a fat cow, and um, the Filbert, who's a turtle. You know, I'm nauseous, I'm nauseous, you know. And the, the Filbert always kind of reminded me of the voice from the guy from the Jerky Boys did. And I know it wasn't him. But, you know, this, when it, you compare this thing to, like, Spongebob, it's so much better. But it has, like, one, I'm trying to remember what the episode's on here that I liked. There was one when they go to France, and, um, you know, they end up going on a tour. It's one of those kind of tours where they're, like, speeding through everything. They don't get to look at anything, so they can't try and go off on their own, and Rocco ends up finding this girlfriend. I don't know. This is just such a good show. I can highly recommend this. Definitely get these so they put out the final season of this. I always say that with these kind of shows. Definitely get these so they continue to put out the other seasons. Next one, too, is um, How, his Hey Arnold Season 2, Part 2. Another really good show. This is like one of the last, I think, really good cartoons on Nick. You know, I, do, I did like SpongeBob, you know, when the original creator was there. When he left, it started to kind of go downhill. You know, they, got, they did some good things with it every so often, just not, nothing that I absolutely love. But this, though, was, you know, Harold and a group, his friends, group of his friends in New York. And it was like a real different one with them kind of going on adventures in the city and things like that. And this one girl that likes Arnold and Helga and all these kind of things. This is just such a fun show. This definitely reminds me of when I was in middle school watching this. I don't know. All in all, though, this is definitely a good one. Now, the next one 
I got, and this is only, I think, $10 at Walmart, and I think it's still there. It's some guys who kill people, no, some guy who kills people, and it stars the guy who was in Slums of Beverly Hills as Natasha Lillian's boyfriend in that. And he was also in, you know, I think he was in this one show, and he's been in lots of movies, though. But it's basically, he just gets out of the nut house. And he's back, lives, goes back to live at home with his mother, who's played by Karen Black. And he ends up, you know, tracking down his daughter. And maybe have this friendship. But yet at the same time, you know, you see, you know, you find out, you keep seeing these flashbacks in his head of him being attacked by a group of these kids when he was younger. Basically because he got put into the nut house for a number of years. And these kids basically drove him crazy. And um, he's end up, in his mind, you see him and you see these scenes of them all getting killed off one by one. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say about it. But I will say though, this was a really cool one. Really, really good twist in it. Um, really like this a lot though. Like I said, it's, you can't say too much. It's one of those kind of ones, there's not a whole lot you can say. The next one is Cult Inside. Anyone can be a weapon. I got this at Walmart as well. And um, this was actually pretty good. The cover, don't judge us on this cover, but it's a group of these um, group of these people going out surfing, and they're trying to go surfing kind of in, they're basically trying to go to this kind of off-island place that's way far out, and I think there was, the guy who's with them, though, is this big surfer, and he went there, and I think he stayed on this island they're going to before for a number of months just surfing all the time, and when they go out there, he ends up um, feeling up and getting fresh with one of the women. Things just don't go well. And because of this, he ends up getting put off the boat, you know, for the night. And let's just say things start going very bad. And it's, they, one review said, too, that the, the, um, the surfer guy is kind of like a David Hess. And I will agree with that. He was really good, very creepy. And I, I don't know, I like this a lot. Now, the last ones I got is from PBS, and it's Finding Your Roots. And it's a documentary series when it basically finds certain celebrities and actors and politicians and stuff. And it goes over, you know, basically it's like, I think it's like 20 or 30 minutes for each person. It's talking about their history and, you know, their grandfathers and things like that. How they got to America or how their parents got to America and things like that. And it's got like Margaret Cho on it, Samuel Jackson, Michelle Rodriguez. It's definitely a cool one. And I think there was something like this too on CBS. I remember too, a similar type of show. The last one is from Comedy Central, and it's Matt, I think it's Brogner, Shovel Fighter. It's basically, you know, it's kind of hard to review a comedy thing, but it's this guy who kind of looked like Colin Williams in the front. It's not him, though. But he basically goes and, you know, it's kind of humor about, you know, things that have happened to him in his life and things like that. I thought he was funny, though. That's all I, I think with, with this kind of thing, all you can say is it's kind of if it was funny or not. But anyway, though, that's all for this week. Um, I think the next one will probably be up in a little over a week or so, maybe two weeks. But I am going to Comic-Con. So if you see me there, you know, you could see this after Comic-Con when it's over. But this week, if you just see it now, definitely say hello. Come over to the Honing and Whaley House signing on Saturday. Um, it's, I think it's 2.30 to 3.30. Um, anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.